This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 310, Renting versus Buying a House, Pros and Cons from a Renting Convert, part two, by Jason Price with ptmoney.com. And I am Dan, your host. Happy Cinco de Mayo to all of you out there in podcast land. I am here each Monday through Friday reading to you from some of the best personal finance blogs on the planet. And as I mentioned, today's post comes to you from Jason Price with PT Money. But before we get into that, if you didn't know already, this is one of five podcasts now where we read blogs to you. So for more free audio content, a lot of hours worth of it, all for free, just search for Optimal Living Daily in any podcast app and you should be able to find all five of our shows. Our newest one, which covers relationships, actually just launched last week, so don't forget about that one. Again, you can find all of this by searching for Optimal Living Daily. Now, today's post here on the show is a continuation from yesterday. Uh, I read the first half in Thursday's show, so if you're new here or just skipping around, definitely check out episode 309 before this one. And now let's hear part two of this post as we optimize your life. Renting versus Buying a House, Pros and Cons from a Renting Convert, Part 2, by Jason Price with ptmoney.com. Why I'm Loving Renting All of the above, quite honestly, makes me ill to think about these days. If I had enough money for a 20% down payment in SoCal today, I'm not sure I would sign up again for home ownership. Housing for us now is just an expense line in our monthly budget. We've downsized considerably, don't require nearly as much furniture, and my landlord just came over last week and replaced the kitchen faucet. Here's some things I'm liking about being a renter. Flexibility. Renting offers a lot of flexibility in that we can sign a one or two year lease. If we're tired of the area or don't like something about it, no problem, we'll just move when we complete our lease and find a new place to rent. I don't have to think about preparing a house for sale and certainly don't encounter all of the expenses of closing the deal. Should we need to move because of a life change, A house could sit on the market for a long time and we could even be forced to sell low. You can't beat the flexibility that renting offers. No debt on our balance sheet. We don't have debt from housing anymore. Again, just the expense. Yeah, but you won't have an asset in 30 years, someone might say. Not so. The equity we got from our house in Dallas is an asset as we have invested it as part of a long-term plan. That asset, if it stays on par with what the market has done on average, would pay for that home in Dallas should we ever decide to move back. Yes, we'll have capital gains taxes, but again, there are taxes and those hidden costs with home ownership. Low maintenance. I've already discussed this quite a bit, but I'll go just one step further and let you know that I'm so pleased that the time I used to spend maintaining my house is now invested in my family and spending time enjoying fun things to do in SoCal. I sold my lawnmower and many tools, more hidden expenses, that were required to be a homeowner. I no longer plant shrubs or have to paint my fence. Nope. Our landlord does that. Liquidity. While our money is invested in the market, we can get to it in a few days if needed. Yes, we might be forced into selling some investments low to get some cash, but at least we can get to the money quickly. I don't have to apply for a loan or worry about not having enough equity in my house to draw upon. What spending temptation? If my wife wants to upgrade the kitchen cabinets, we can either ask our landlord to do it or simply move to a property we like better when our lease is up. We also don't have the temptation to spend to fill a media room and other spaces in a big house because we simply don't have the rooms to fill today. In our Dallas house, we had considered at least four rooms that needed a couch. Ridiculous. In our new SoCal space, I'm pleased to report there's only enough room for one couch. The more stuff you have, the more your life is crowded and the more time it takes to maintain it all. Renting for us has greatly simplified life. Location, location, location. Unless you're super wealthy, you can't live wherever you want to live. It costs too much to buy in that neighborhood, right? Well, renting is typically cheaper than home ownership as a monthly expense. That said, it may just offer you the opportunity to explore a dream and live by the coast, in the mountains, or some other desired location that wasn't possible before. Thinking different. I love how our lifestyle has completely changed because of pursuing a dream to live by the coast. A big home is no longer a priority because we simply don't stay inside very much. The weather and beauty draws us outside daily. Yes, there are some drawbacks to renting one needs to understand, but for us, it's a simpler approach. It's flexible, it provides the location we desire, and reduces housing expenses. Final thoughts on renting versus buying a home. In summary, I want to say that I'm not making a case against homeownership. It's just a different perspective. 
and there's certainly no one-size-fits-all or right or wrong answer. Homeownership can be a very good plan if you can afford the down payment and stick to a long-term plan to stay in the house and ride out any market swings. There are many advantages of homeownership, such as outright owning your property. But again, please don't be short-sighted in thinking that homeownership is the best answer. It's often said, owning a home long-term is cheaper than renting. Maybe, but there are lots and lots of home expenses to consider along the way that aren't always part of the discussion and nearly impossible to calculate, like the value of your time no longer fixing and maintaining. There are simply too many advantages to ignore for today's renter for this not to be a serious part of the discussion. I didn't realize it at the time, but owning a home for me was a huge weight of responsibility carried on my shoulders. I'm walking lighter these days and enjoying cool evenings on the front porch with my wife under a roof we still call home and when friends come over to visit. You just listened to part two of the post titled Renting Versus Buying a House, Pros and Cons from a Renting Convert by Jason Price with ptmoney.com. And before we go, just another quick reminder that this is one of five podcasts in our little podcast family. Just search for Optimal Living Daily wherever you're hearing this show to get a lot more content for free covering things like productivity, minimalism, health, entrepreneurship, and as of last week, relationships too. Thank you all so much for listening all the way through today. That's gonna do it for episode 310. Have yourselves a great weekend and I'll see you on Monday where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this podcast, but also Optimal Living Daily, the show where I read to you from even more blogs covering finance, productivity, minimalism, personal development, and more from incredible bloggers like Derek Sivers, Zen Habits, Mark and Angel, The Minimalists, and all the ones you hear on this show too. So if you enjoyed today's episode and like taking amazing blogs on the go, come on over to Optimal Living Daily and subscribe to that one too. And together, we'll start optimizing your life. You've been listening to Optimal Finance Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.